stop the jiggling here. All right, here we go again for um, 20 minute or less, uh, like a mini art tutorial. And today we're doing concentric circles. I, I love math, believe it or not. That was one of my really, really good subjects in school along with art. And I've always been told that those two never go together, <laughs> but here I am. Um, so anything is possible, right? Right? So today we've got um, concentric circles. They're inspired by Vasily Kandinsky, who was believed to be the pioneer of uh, abstract art. And he went to school and studied law and economics, but ended up being an artist. There you go, anything's possible. So um, I love the combination of math and art and science and art because it does, it all exists together. It's very much um, a part of each other and one cannot exist without the other. So I've got um, lots of different circles here and I've adapted this and I'm gonna show you a couple so you can play around with it and make it pretty easy for some young ones that might be with you or a little bit more challenging for some older ones. So I'm gonna show you the uh, modification and adaptation for little ones. You're gonna need a variety of lids or containers of different sizes. So I have things that range from little to, to big and different sizes. That's like a marker lid, um, applesauce containers, milk jug lids, uh, that's a water bottle lid, paint lid. I've got all of these different sizes here. And I've got a tray of paint. This is some tempera and some acrylic. So again, pretty much any paint will work. Uh, I chose uh, six different colors, bright colors and, and just something that would be fun. So your choice, you can, if you have two colors or three colors, you can make patterns even, another great math connection. So I find it easier to um, start with your bigger circle first, and then you can put the smaller circles inside of it. So what you're gonna wanna do is pick your first color. I'm gonna pick blue just because it's on the edge, easy to get to. I would have, I should have picked a, a bigger lid to kind of get my color in. You can even have them paint on the, the edge for the circles. I'm just going to kind of wipe it, wipe it, ready to go. It's covered in lovely blue paint. And I'm going to stamp it on my paper. Any paper will work. You can give it a little bit of a twist if you want. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker and not so just directly circular. And lift it up. There's your first circle. Now you're going to see a pattern here. Now you're going to want to pick something that's going to be a little bit smaller. I just grabbed these. I haven't even tested it yet. So um, I'm going to pick a different color this time. Let's go. I'm going to go pink. There. You can, you can stamp circles any which way. And it might be a little messy, I'm getting it on my fingers already. So it's gonna go inside that circle. Uh, I should paper towel, have some paper towel on hand or nearby or a wet cloth or wet rag. There we go, there's another one. Uh, your fingers are probably gonna get pretty messy doing this. Um, and let's go something a little bit smaller. They can be right close together. I'm gonna go orange next. You can create patterns with your colors even. You don't have to. There we go, orange. Now I think these are pretty close. Ooh, one's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go green. So a great size and relationship. A little activity too. Art's so sneaky, you never know what you're gonna get. There we go. And I'm gonna go a couple smaller ones here. Let's do this one. 
I'm gonna go purple next. I'm gonna use yellow for my center. There. Just a stamp. I think those are pretty close with that. Some of the edges of the containers are a little bit thicker than others. This one's really thin. There we go. So there I have one set of concentric circles. And if you want, just continue stamping. Like I've, you can stamp all over the page. I have enough paint on there to do three. And here's my purple one. I'm gonna go working the opposite way, trying to get the bigger one over the smaller one and just randomly stamp until you run out of paint if you want. They can overlap if you want to make them. Anything goes with art. I always say there's really no rules that can't be broken in art because you sometimes get amazing results from it. And there's no mistakes either. So your way, you are the artist and you get to decide those wonderful things. There we go. And I'm just gonna stamp until I got all the paint off of these. So you can have one where it's really focused, one where it's not so much, and if they end up stamping their fingerprints or other things, it's totally okay. It's completely okay. It's such an exploration of a process. Okay, so that is my concentric circles inspired by Vasily Kandinsky for younger younger or look at me i'm not that young um but i'm liking the process it's a lot of fun just to play so encourage yourself get down get dirty have fun and play and explore and talk about what part you liked the best what inspired you what would you change if you could anything like that what does it remind you of even so all of those fun things i forgot my orange stick on there. There we go. Okay. So now for the ones that are a little bit older. So this is um, quite interesting. You're going to need paper. You've got your paint. You're going to need one of these protractor thingamajigs from a geometry set and a paintbrush, any size paintbrush. The bigger the paintbrush, the thicker your line is going to be. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go with a big brush. I haven't even tried, oh, I don't know if this one will fit actually. Mm. We'll see, what can I do? I haven't uh, tried these for a little while. I haven't played with them very much. I want to make sure I've got a, a paintbrush. Oh, I'm so messy already. A paintbrush that is going to fit in there. Okay. So you'll probably have to adjust your paintbrush. And that's in there pretty good. You want to make sure it doesn't flip and flop on you because it's going to be really hard to make a circle. You can have a little ruler handy and you can actually measure the radius of your circle. So you've got the radius being say, let's go, this has got centimeters here. So if I do, okay, this is almost six centimeters. If you have a radius in your um, circle of six, your diameter is going to be well, doubles. My little guy in grade one has been working on doubles and he likes to remind me that he knows them all. So I've got my protractor, my paintbrush. I'm going to grab some paint. I'm going to start with orange this time. I'm going to load up my brush pretty good. Um, it's going to make a fairly decent sized circle. All right. And when I make my circles, even when I was using a pencil, I like to kind of drag it 
So I've got my center point pressed down pretty firmly. And oh, look at that. It worked. <laughs> Always super happy about that. Okay. Um, in my rush to get on here, I didn't even grab paper towels. So I always record this first and then I usually do a live one. Um, so I know what I need um, and figure out what I don't have. So I'm gonna make a few more. Again, you can make them side by side. You can make them overlapping. I'm gonna do them side by side, making sure it's gonna fit on my page, dragging it the other way. These ones are really nice because they don't flop in and out on you. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the pink next. It will work pretty good um, with the orange on my brush. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go, let's do a four centimeter. I could even go bigger. I could go... Let's go, that's 10. This one is a 10. So I've got my little dot I see there in the exact same spot. And there we go. Drag it around. You get some really cool color mixing too if you don't mix your brush. So this one, I'm gonna go off the page if I do a big one, so I'm just gonna make it smaller. So that one's going to be four. I can still see my dot there, which is great because I was pressing quite firmly. Just tilt it a little bit. There we go. So again, you can fill your whole page. Um, you can change your brushes and have different size lines. You can overlap your circles and just create and play and have fun. This I, it's so much fun for me because it gives me a break from some of the focus of doing my my intensive artworks that are lots of layers and really kind of dig deep in my um, feelings and emotions. I'm just not ready to go there yet with all this stuff. <laughs> so I'm just playing. So I really hope that you have a lot of fun playing too. I'll do one more just to get the blue of my brush. So I'm gonna shrink it again. That's three. There. So there are um, a couple options there for you to play around with concentric circles for multiple ages. Thanks for watching and being here. Take care.